Welcome to the Rarebox channel. Before we will learn 10 programming languages, I would like to thank our sponsor Udemy, an online learning and teaching marketplace with over 200,000 courses and over 50 million students. With Udemy you can learn programming, marketing, data science and more. So Python, the first language, it is interpreted, so you will see the interpreter on the right and the code on the left. Commands are ignored. Declare a variable and another variable. Then just print them. Check if b is true. True. Declare high. Print high its first letter and a slice from it and its length. Works as expected. Declare the verbox variable and insert it into a string using formatting. Also, we can convert it to the uppercase. Use the for in a range to print something multiple times. Also, we can use list comprehension to print first 10 squares. We declare a function, call it, check if length of a cat is 3, it prints meow, so it's true, declare an array, append two elements to it, print the array, then we declare a dictionary or a table in another language and access an element from it. Then we create a person class with name and age, create a person and print it. The person class has a magic string method responsible for representing object as a string. And if you want to master Python programming, check out the best-selling Udemy course 100 Days of Code, the complete Python Pro Bootcamp by Dr. Angela Yu. Throughout the course you will learn the basics and then move on to more awesome things like data science, web scraping, automation, graphical user interface programming and more. Hey guys, welcome to day 53 of 100 days of code. Link in the description. And now let's learn Java, a cross-platform programming language which is simultaneously interpreted and compiled. 3 billion devices run Java for over 25 years. To get started, import some stuff, create the main class, declare main function, print hello world, declare age, print age with concatenation and string formatting, use ternary if operator, declare an array of doubles, print its second element, loop over it and print elements one by one, create a hash map of string to double pairs. We can also use var for initialization, put some elements in it and print one. Try to throw and catch an exception. Create the person class with some properties, boilerplate code and toString method, which formats the class when it is converted to string. Create person 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 and print it. Java popularity is falling and now it is primarily used in Minecraft and banking systems, which is the reason to learn C++. Include some stuff, declare main function, Use the standard output to print hello world, set the namespace you're using, comment out the necessary line, declare age variable and ask age label. Ask the age and use the standard input to read the value. Use if to check if the age lower than 18, in this case forbid the entry and reask. Declare custom structure type with two double precision variables. Create custom namespace with a variable which would shadow another variable if it would not be in the namespace. Create a class with some properties and a method which do some math to return the distance. Declare the constructor, create the object and print its distance and return zero which indicates successful exit. Compile the file and run it. works as expected. However, a lot of people consider C++ unsafe, which is the reason to learn Rust. Create main function, print hello world using the println macro, write a function which adds two 32-bit integers, call and store it in a variable. Allow unused variables for demonstration. Make it mutable and increment. Print it using formatting. Create a usual string and a string stored in a heap program section. Declaring types explicitly is usually optional. After printing we declare an array and its first element type. Then we create a mutable array known as vector. Add an element and take a slice, which work like pointers in C++ but with length. Use a colon and question mark to print a slice or vector or array. Then create a tuple and unpack it into three variables. Then create a point structure holding two floats. You can use it like that. Also, you can make a structure with unnamed fields. The most cool thing is enum, which can hold structure and just value. 
or neither of them. Also you can use const for variables with a known value. As you see, enums can be pretty handy. Also you can use if let syntax to get a value from enum. Wait, it's over 1 minute already? Ok, programming in Rust is not a skill you gain in 60 seconds, which is why I suggest taking the ultimate Rust crash course by Nathan Stocks, available on Udemy. In just 3 hours you will learn Rust fundamentals, such as variables, scope, functions, modules, scalar and compound types, control flow, strings, structs, traits, enums and more. Next language is Go, which has very good documentation and is suitable for backend programming. All Go files follow the same structure similar to the one shown on video. We can add a global variable and convert it to the time duration type and sleep. Actually no, comment it out. You can declare a variable in two ways. Print them out. Declare x and a for loop, where we add a simple condition. Print the result and then create an array. Print the length of array its first element and a slice. Then iterate over array and print element number and the element using printf function, create a map from string to float, and put some values in it. Get an element and check if it is present. Then make an integer channel, declare a variable and call a function as a go routine. In a for loop, retrieve values from the channel and print them, then close the channel. Now write a dream function which sleeps and writes to the channel, in a for loop. Now just use go run command to run the file. Everything works as expected. The next language I want to tell about is Bash, which is a Unix shell and a command language, which helps automate things in Linux. The shell is a program which runs in a terminal emulator. Now create a directory and navigate to it. Print the directory you are in. Create a file named file. List files. Write some text to the file and print its content using cat command. Now use if statement to compare the contents of the file with a string. If the comparison is true, then echo yes, else echo no. After closing the if statement with phi, we see the output. As you already know, you can use the dollar sign and parentheses to insert command into a string. In this example, we used wc command to count the bytes in file. It wrote 7 instead of 6 because all text files have a tracing new line. We can use the cp command to copy the file. Use the following syntax to append the text to the file. Use a cat to read the files. As you can see, the text is appended. Use div command to see the difference between files. Of course, there is more bash than that, but you can always read the documentation. The next language is JavaScript. This time I will skip the basics, because JavaScript syntax is very similar to Java or C++. This time we have a pretty simple website. Every quote has the text class. Let's get elements by class name and store it in the elements variable. We can see that every element in the collection corresponds to the element on the page. Now iterate over all elements and print its inner text. Let's add onClick event listener for all elements and write a callback function. It can have an optional event argument, but we won't use that. Instead, let's convert text to the uppercase when user clicks on it. As you can see, it works as expected. Now let's create an input element, set its type to number, append it after the first element in the array. Here it is. Enter a number. Now let's get the value. Use parse int to convert the value from string to int. Also, you can set the value. However, modern web applications are not made with just pure JavaScript, because it would lead to cluttering the code base. To create a complex real world app, you should learn a framework like React.js, React, the complete guide, including hooks, React Router, Redux is the perfect course for upcoming front end developers. What are you waiting for? And now for something completely different. Let's learn a netwide assembler. Comments start with semicolon. Declare the start entry function, declare the text section, the section which contains program code, and read only data section, where we store the hello world string followed by a new line. Also, store the length of the string, which equals the current memory address minus string address. Declare start function. Inside, move 1 to the rux register. 
register, which corresponds to the write system call. Set the file descriptor number to 1, which is standard output. Pass our string and its length. Finally call the kernel, but after writing the text we need to exit. So we jump to the exit function, the exit system call has the number 60, the exit code is 0, which means successful exit, call the kernel. Now compile the file to the executable and linkable format, elf64, the executable format in Linux. Link the object file and run it. Have you ever heard about functional programming? That's what Haskell is about. Declare a radius. Check if it equals 12. Check if it not equals 12. Define getArea function. The pi constant is predefined. Declare an integer array. Map getArea function over each element. Declare a to be just 43. It has a maybe type holding a value of num type class. We can extract that value using pattern matching. Define add 10 function. We also can define it like that, where we partially apply class operator. Let's use partially applied function as a filter. Just like Python, Haskell has list comprehension. In this example, we output the squares of first 10 numbers. Numeric and character ranges can be defined with a step. Let's define the factorial function. The factorial of 1 is always 1. Other numbers should follow the rule. Also, let's implement collapse conjecture and define the main function. This is a hello world code, but let's print the result of the functions. We can use dollar sign notation instead of parentheses. Let's compile and run the code. It works. The next language, or language family to be exact, is similar to Haskell. First Lisp appeared in 1958 and was the first interpreted programming language. In this tutorial we will use common Lisp and its implementation SBCL. Print to standard output using format function. Tilde and percent is a new line. Lisp doesn't have operators, only functions. Because of that arithmetic operations are often confusing. Declare a variable. If 30 is less than x, print the formatted string. In a loop, print numbers from 1 to 10. Or do that in an alternate way. Define a function to calculate the Euler's number and run it with an argument of 1 million. Now let's calculate the sum of first 100 integers. Let is used to create a scoped variable. Use setQ to update the value of the variable. Notice that 1 plus is a function which increments the variable and returns the new value. Now save the file and run it with still bank common lisp. As you see, it works. Today, the most popular programming language from the Lisp family is Clojure, which runs on the Java platform. It is ranked as the highest paid language in a Stack Overflow survey. Write your favorite programming language in the comments and thank you for watching.